on World News Tonight. Strengthening Partnership Taiwan and Czechia reaches consensus on several MOUs to strengthen their bilateral partnership. Bribery Allegations U.S. lawmakers accuses former FTX owner Bankman Fried accused of bribing Chinese government. End of the Road The EU votes to ban all sales of diesel and petrol vehicles from 2035. Serves up Hawaiian waves are made in Germany for surfers to conquer. This is Adhaderna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and we bring to you news from across the world. The second summit for democracy began in Washington, D.C., an annual meeting designed to hold rising authoritarian power in check, including China. Topping the meeting on the first day was a call for peace in Ukraine. This year's summit opened with a preliminary session hosted by Washington on Tuesday local time to highlight the key themes to be discussed over the next three days. It kicked off with the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken stressing the need for peace in Ukraine. While Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky was originally scheduled to join the session, he was unable to attend as he extended his tour of the war's front lines. In his keynote speech, Blinken reiterated his support for a plan to establish peace in Ukraine through the full withdrawal of Russian troops and expressed opposition to a proposal made by China following President Xi Jinping's visit to Moscow last week, saying it would only benefit Russia. Blinken also led a session on empowering women in democratic society to promote gender equality. An issue highlighted during his speech was the online harassment and abuse that women and girls face, which showcased the Global Partnership for Action on Gender-Based Online Harassment and Abuse initiative announced at the first summit two years ago. Other key topics on the agenda included countering corruption, led by U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, and strengthening unions between democratic societies. The main conference will be co-hosted by the United States, South Korea, Costa Rica, the Netherlands and Zambia the following day, with each co-host leading a virtual live session on a variety of topics. During Biden's first summit for democracy in 2021, around 110 countries were in attendance. This year, around 120 countries will be taking part, including Taiwan, despite China's efforts to exclude Taiwan from such multinational events. Taiwan and Czech Republic signed several memorandums of understanding to strengthen their bilateral partnership as Taipei seeks closer ties with Western democracies in the face of Chinese pressure. The Czech delegation of roughly 150 people arrived in Taipei, led by the Speaker of the Lower Chamber of the Czech Parliament, Marketa Pekrova Adamova, who recently described the Czech Republic and Taiwan as strong partners. Today, Adamova said their fight to defend democratic freedoms, human rights and similar values will always continue and never end. The visit is a boost for Taipei after its once-loyal ally Honduras switched allegiance to Beijing, dwindling the number of countries that retained formal diplomatic ties with Chinese claim Taiwan to just 13. But U.S. allies such as Czech Republic have been bolstering support for the democratic island even as they also only officially recognize China. Prosecutors have accused FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried of conspiring to bribe Chinese government officials to regain access to more than $1 billion in frozen cryptocurrency in a new indictment that charged him with violating U.S. anti-corruption law. More legal hot water for disgraced crypto mogul Sam Bankman-Fried. The founder of now bankrupt crypto exchange FTX was accused by Manhattan federal prosecutors on Tuesday of conspiring to bribe Chinese government officials with $40 million worth of payments. The new charge adds pressure on the 31-year-old former billionaire who now faces a 13-count indictment over the November collapse of FTX. Prosecutors had previously accused Bankman Freed of stealing billions of dollars in customer funds to plug losses at his Alameda Research hedge fund and orchestrating an illegal campaign donation scheme to buy influence in Washington. 
He has pleaded not guilty to eight of the 12 prior counts he faces. The latest indictment accuses Bankman Freed of ordering a $40 million cryptocurrency payment to a private wallet from Alameda's main trading account to persuade Chinese authorities to unfreeze Alameda accounts with more than $1 billion of cryptocurrency. A spokesman for Bankman Freed declined to comment. China's foreign ministry could not immediately be reached for comment after business hours in Beijing. The Chinese embassy in Washington, D.C. did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Bankman Freed, who has been confined to his parents' Palo Alto, California home ahead of his October trial, is expected to be arraigned Thursday on the latest charge. The judge on Tuesday also approved modifications to Bankman Freed's $250 million bail package, which include the use of a cell phone without internet connection and a laptop with limited functions. Elon Musk made some major announcements. He said only verified Twitter accounts would be eligible to vote in polls starting from the 15th of April, a move that the social media company's CEO believe will address AI bot swarms. Twitter is about to make some big changes to its poll voting methods and For You section. That was the announcement from the social media company CEO Elon Musk on Monday. From April 15th, Musk said only verified Twitter accounts would be allowed to vote in polls. Musk claimed it was to address advanced AI bot swarms. In another big move, the Twitter owner said only verified accounts would be eligible to appear in the site's For You recommendations. The For You section displays a stream of tweets from accounts on Twitter. The social media firm did not immediately respond to his request for comment. Last year, Musk had said Twitter would restrict voting on policy-related polls to paying Twitter Blue subscribers. He took over the site last year in a $44 billion takeover. Ad spending fell sharply soon after. That after Musk released a paid account verification system which led to scammers impersonating organisations. Over the weekend, the information reported Twitter employees were offered stock grants valuing the company at just under $20 billion. That is less than half of the amount Musk paid to buy the platform, which points to a huge drop in value. Calls for calm and dialogue in Kenya have multiplied, including from the African Union, in the wake of fresh protests marred by violence and looting. Police fired tear gas whispers opposition demonstrators in Nairobi and in the western town of Kisumu, where one person was killed. Kenyan President William Ruto on Tuesday said criminals would be held to account after a second week of protests against his government and the rising cost of living. Those involved in criminal activity, including the invasions, will be brought to book. Religious leaders and human rights groups called for calm amid the protests, now in their second week. They are being led by opposition leader Raila Odinga, who has called for rallies every Monday and Thursday to pressure Ruto's government into action. On Monday, police fired tear gas and water cannons at stone-throwing Odinga supporters. And Kenyan media reported that a property belonging to Odinga's family and then another belonging to former President Uhuru Kenyatta was vandalized. Late on Monday night, unknown perpetrators set fire to a church and several businesses in Nairobi's low-income Kibera district. A mosque was also damaged. This pile of smoking debris used to be Joseph Maloba's tire shop. It was one of many businesses and homes destroyed on Monday night. This is a very big loss. I don't know how I'll recover it. I don't know what, uh, where I'll start from. I, do, I totally don't know what I'll do. The damage to businesses could present a challenge to the government's efforts to rebuild a hard-hit economy. Each day of the protests has cost the country about $23 million, said the Kenya Private Sector Alliance. Odinga has denied Ruto's claims that he is trying to stir up chaos in a country with a history of political and ethnic violence often around elections. Odinga said the protests would continue until Ruto addressed the high cost of living in Kenya. We'll be back with more world news after this short commercial break.
Welcome back. Turning over to the European Union now, as the 27 nation bloc has finalized a plan that effectively bans the sale of new fossil fuel cars by the year 2035. The deal was made official in Brussels after a meeting between EU Energy and Transport Ministers. It calls for a 100% reduction in CO2 emissions by the cut-off date for car manufacturers, which effectively prohibits the sale of new combustion vehicles. However, one exemption was made as Germany successfully campaigned to allow the sale of vehicles that only uses e fuels which is technology combining hydrogen and carbon dioxide to maintain and make synthetic fuels. The new regulation marks an acceleration of efforts to switch to electric vehicles and tackle climate change. Data shows that cars make up to 12% of the EU's total carbon emissions. A group of car-friendly countries led by Germany formed an alliance with countries including Italy, Poland, Bulgaria and Czech Republic to vote down the new legislation. These member states were pushing for cars that run on e fuel to be exempt from the ban. But France has said it is ready to fight for the new legislation. According to Economy Minister Bruno Le Maire, it has taken two years to finalise the measures which now only need a formal stamp of approval from ministers to become the law. On an update on the war in Ukraine, Russian forces are still edging forward in the bombed-out eastern Ukrainian city of Bakhmut, a Moscow-installed official said. But British intelligence said a Russian tank division had taken heavy losses in the nearby town of Avdivka. Video released on Tuesday purports to show British Challenger 2 main battle tanks on the ground in Ukraine for the first time. This footage from Ukrainian Defense Minister Alexei Reznikov shared on social media includes the cabinet official thanking the United Kingdom. Thank you very much from Ukraine to the United Kingdom. But these tanks will have to do more than trend on Twitter. Ukraine has begged and pleaded for months for advanced weaponry ahead of what is an expected counteroffensive against invading Russian forces occupying swaths of territory in the country's east. The U.S. and NATO have promised tanks and artillery in hopes that Ukraine can repeat some of the successes it saw last year in repelling Russian attacks and retaking Russian-held regions. But that offensive has yet to take shape. Kiev and Moscow have spent months locked in bitter combat over the now shattered eastern city of Bakhmut, a battle both sides have described as a meat grinder where the front line has barely moved. A Moscow-installed leader in eastern Ukraine on Tuesday said Russian forces were making gains in Bakhmut. But in a video released on Telegram, Ukrainian commander Alexander Sirsky said his forces were inflicting heavy losses on Russian attackers in an effort to exhaust the invaders. Heavy fighting has also moved to the town of Avdivka, a bit to the south, where British intelligence said a Russian tank division had suffered heavy losses. Video released by Ukrainian police purported to show officers working to evacuate civilians as the front line inched closer. But residents in nearby Semenivka told they had no plans to leave. 56-year-old Elena, who did not give a surname, said there is no place to leave for. Where should we go and how can I leave my home? That's why we're staying here. This 71-year-old said our army is holding up and so are we. We have hope. We have hope and we hope the situation will calm down. Both sides are signaling their readiness for even more brutal combat ahead. Moscow on Tuesday released footage of Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu inspecting arms factories, showing munitions being readied for the front. Armada! Russia and Ukraine are both reportedly expending artillery shells at a rate not seen since the Second World War. France's defense minister on Tuesday said it would double its supply of 155mm shells to Ukraine to about 2,000 per month. As expectations of a new offensive build, these Ukrainian recruits this week practiced firing rifles and rocket-propelled grenades <laughs> under the eye of a Swedish instructor, Magnus Ek. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Tuesday used the one-year anniversary of what he called the decisive battles to recapture territory here in the Sumy region from Russian forces to rally his countrymen for the expected springtime counterattack. <laughs> He noted the Russian border sat quite close, a border he said no tyrant will ever manage to erase. Ukrainian fighters here pushed back Russian attackers a year ago in an early victory for Kiev following Moscow's invasion. It remains to be seen whether an influx of Western tanks, shells and training will mean Ukraine's armed forces can do that again. 
At least 39 migrants from Central and South America died after a fire broke out at a migrant holding center in the Mexican northern border city of Ciudad Juarez. Pope Francis offered his prayers for the victims as well. Dozens of migrants from Central and South America died after a fire broke out Monday night at a migrant holding center in Mexico's northern border city of Ciudad Juarez. That's according to the Mexican government, which said there were 68 adult men staying at the facility. 29 of them were also injured in the blaze. Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador said the blaze apparently broke out after migrants set fire to mattresses in protest after discovering they would be deported. Some people were already gathered outside the facility as smoke poured out when emergency crews arrived. They could be seen carrying out casualties. 31-year-old Venezuelan Viangli Infante pounded on an ambulance as her husband was being treated for his injuries. She said she had been waiting at the facility even before the fire broke out. I have been waiting for their father since 1 p.m. They told me that they were going to hand him over to me, and then, at 10 p.m., we started to see smoke billowing from everywhere. Everybody ran away, but they left the men locked in. Everybody was removed from the area, but they left the men locked in. They never opened the door. Infante said authorities took her husband off the street without asking for paperwork and put him into the facility. She said he was in a holding cell when the fire started and survived by dousing himself in water and pressing against a door. The blaze in Ciudad Juarez, one of Mexico's most deadly in years, occurred as the U.S. and Mexico are battling to cope with record levels of border crossings. Recent weeks have seen a buildup of migrants in Mexican border cities as authorities attempt to process asylum requests using a new U.S. government app. Relatives and neighbors mourned children and adults killed by a landslide that hit the small town of Alausi in Ecuador. Emergency services are still searching for survivors. At least 16 people are known to have died and 16 more are injured, but more are feared missing. Relatives and neighbors on Tuesday mourned lives lost in a landslide that hit the small town of Alausi in Ecuador late Sunday night. Victims were laid to rest as authorities announced a rising official death toll. Rescuers racing to find those still missing were joined by family digging where they believe the loved ones may be after tons of mud overtook their homes. Yolanda Marcatoma is among relatives hoping for closure. All the bad luck has found my family, but others don't even have their families. They're still under the dirt, so I beg they help look for them and find all the people so they may be given a Christian burial. President Guillermo Lasso on Monday night offered to extend the rescue operation to find those missing when he visited the affected area. Government data shows dozens of people have been rescued, but there are fears more landslides could be triggered. As a precaution, hundreds of homes have been ordered to evacuate and head to emergency centers. Ecuador's disaster agency in February had warned of potential landslide danger for Alausi, which included part of the area where Sunday's landslide hit. President Lasso last week declared an emergency in 14 provinces because of the weather and an earthquake on March 18th. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. The giant meatball made from flesh cultivated using the DNA of an extinct woolly mammoth was unveiled at Nemo, a science museum in Netherlands. The meatball was created by Australian cultured meat company Wow, which said it wanted to get people talking about cultured meat, calling it more sustainable alternative for real meat. Ancient weapons in Sana's military museum offer a glimpse into the armed conflicts Yemen has gone through since ancient times. Archaeologists Muhammad Jaza and Sara Al Dubai talk about the restoration process of the antiquities. Several river barges broke loose from a tow boat on the Ohio River in Louisville, Kentucky, with three barges pinned against the lower Muck Alpine Dam site. Five Komodo dragon hatchlings have been born at a zoo in southern Spain, marking the first time in a decade that the world's largest lizards successfully breed in the country. The baby dragons live in separate territories, so vets can monitor their growth. When ready, they will be reunited before being presented to the public. 
The Union Jack was seen flying in front of Brandenburg Gate announcing the upcoming arrival of Britain's King Charles who will be coming to Germany for his first foreign state visit together with his wife, Queen Consort Camilla. Two women were killed and one person was wounded in a knife attack believed to have been carried out by an Afghan refugee at the Ismaili Centre in Lisbon. Shortly after the attack, a number of people looking distressed could be seen standing outside the centre amid a heavy police presence and later were taken inside. Former chairman of the Chinese Kuomintang Party visited the Sun Yat-sen Mausoleum in Najin of East China's Jiangsu province. Ma has brought with him a group of Taiwan students for communication and exchange activities with a hope to improve the current cross-strait atmosphere through face-to-face -face interaction between young people. That is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you miss any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Now consider the blade players of surfing with waves many surfers worldwide are dreaming to conquer. We leave you tonight with the Hawaiian island of Oahu opening the world's biggest standing wave pool. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.